Now Javier Baez will see how he's received. And Conforto slashes one the other way. Base hit. That ties the game. Alonso in. Baez digging for third. It's kicked by a furl. Here comes Baez for the score. He scores. And the Mets win it. Turn those folks around. Javier Baez races home with a winning run. And the Mets win it 6-5. to five. Oh, man. Nothing like sticking it to your own fans, Javi Baez. Hilarious. In a Mets game yesterday, an afternoon game, Javier Baez, who famously dominated the internet when he got mad at the fans for booing him and said it doesn't affect him, but it hurts his feelings. And then he said, I'm going to boo the fans. And then he got up to the plate and the fans booed him. And then he won the game for them. Got to love it. Nothing but abusive relationships going on in New York sports. I love it. It's hilarious. All of this is hilarious because he's a rental and the Mets suck. And this is not going to matter because they're not going to make the playoffs because they're not good at baseball. It is it, all of this for a win against Miami, who is a trash team. <laughs> this is interesting to see your daily sports podcast about news, narratives, takes and gambling, more gambling on the show today. We're going to talk about NFL cut day, a couple of big stories. The first one that everyone's talking about, Cam Newton got cut. There are theories about this and that. The idea is that a, he was cheap, so it doesn't matter. B, Mac Jones is the starter and C with Cam Newton. You have to have multiple game plans. He has a history of injury, and he's not vaccinated. So if you, if you have a game plan for Cam Newton as the starter, and then he gets hurt or he's not vaccinated, you have to change everything. Um, and I also there's a, there's a rumor or a, a narrative going around that you can watch out for among the elite football people. So like this is, this is going to go beyond the vaccine stuff. There's a narrative that Cam Newton doesn't want to be a backup. So they said, hey, do you want to be a backup? And he said, no. And they're like, all right, well, we'll cut you. And he's like, okay. So a lot of people think that uh, a lot of people in the football sphere think he's not going to play football this year. I think that you see an injury at a place like Philly to Hertz, see an injury at a place like Dallas to Prescott, see an injury at a place like Detroit to Goff. He's cheap. The Patriots are playing him. They're paying him like nothing. He's not very good at football anymore. So they cut him. They're going to go with Mac Jones. Every rookie is going to have a chance to start. It seems like this season at some point, that'll be exciting. The Detroit football lions cut both their kickers, which is hilarious. Analytics people are like, they're going for it on fourth down. And football people are like, they're tough now. Okay, well, they're going to have a kicker. Duh. Or they're going to make their punter kick because why not? Who cares? This year doesn't matter. What a great year to experiment. For Detroit, this could be. Uh, let's go to an actual story. Urban Meyer, I love you, dude. You are great. And I have, I have since reversed my own take on this situation. So Urban Meyer, in an interview, said that he did consider vaccination status when making cuts. And like, that's obvious because if you're not vaccinated, even if you don't get COVID, the NFL is going to require you to sit out for a longer period of time than people who are vaccinated. So if you're in a close contact and you're vaccinated, no one cares. No one cares. If you're a close contact and you got the vaccine in the NFL, it's like, oh, well, that sucks, whatever. No, like, no one cares. If you didn't get the vaccine and you're a close contact, you are required to leave the facility for five days and until you test positive a certain amount of time. If you get COVID, test positive, and you're unvaccinated, you have to leave for a while. You have to have multiple positive t uh, negative tests, and you have to be gone for 10 days. People are going to miss time over that. So it's going to matter for missing time. You know, it's, it's like an injury risk. If you're elite, like if you're Patrick Mahomes or Tyreek Hill, it won't matter. But if you're a guy on the roster bubble, it probably matters a lot. Uh, this is a union issue because the labor organization is like, it's a personal choice to get vaccinated legally. That seems probably true. We're dealing with that as a country right now. So everybody knows that vaccination status is going to matter when it comes to cuts. Everybody thinks it might have played a role in the Cam Newton thing. Urban Meyer came out and said it. Bro, it's not Ohio State. Shut up. Shut up. I do respect him for saying that because like, it helps the national narrative of like, yeah, you didn't get vaccinated. I cut you. But you're going to get sued. The NFLPA announced that they're opening an investigation. This was confirmed to Pro Football Talk. Via text message, Pro Football Talk, Mike Florio. Not great for takes, really great for legal stuff, labor stuff. That's why you read that website. This happened earlier this season. Brandon Bean for the Bills, if I remember right, yes, he said he was going to cut unvaccinated players, and the NFLPA was like, dude, shut up. The NFL and the NFLPA are really bringing the hammer down on the guys that are unvaccinated. All you have to do is keep it quiet. If you're going to cut a guy who's not vaccinated, don't say I cut him because he's not vaccinated, Urban. 
college coaches who come to the NFL who are head coaches of teams that were not gift horses like Florida, like Ohio State, I would also include in there Alabama, LSU, Georgia, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Texas, etc. College coaches who come from any other small programs, like names that have been thrown around recently, Stanford with David Shaw, Pat Fitzgerald, uh, Northwestern, Iowa State, Matt Campbell, uh, Matt Rule from Baylor, those places, they know how to shut up. They are not the kings of these mini dynasties. This is what Urban, you're not a king, dude. That story going around about how he called the CEO of a hospital to... Uh, change the care plan that nurses wanted for one of his player's wives during birth. That's crazy. That is, that is crazy talk. By the way, uh, do a nurse, do it, just do what nurses say. When nurses are in scrubs in a hospital, just do what they say. Literally just do what they say. Cannot emphasize that enough. So Urban, the king of his castle, I do respect, I do, I mean, I can't, I do respect the honesty. I do respect the honesty, but I also acknowledge the stupidity. Um... Because that is, it is incredibly stupid. I mean, I can't... How do you know not to shut up about this? Like, he doesn't know the rules? What are you doing? You're just watching highlights of the Tim Tebow years? I actually kind of think that might be what he's been doing. Yeah. Um, that's probably true. All right. Update on Bishop Sycamore. I think someone got arrested. I don't care about this story anymore. It was really crazy that it happened in the 21st century. People hoodwink people all the time. So I'm over it. You heard it here first. It was reported by that one website. Remember, we were there. We beat everybody else, and now you are ahead of the curve for listening to me. Uh, we do have some more Jaguars drama. I could bring it up on the screen, but it's too much full screen. Dave Caldwell is a former Jacksonville Jaguars GM and still kind of with this and that. He uh, doesn't have say over the roster anymore. That's Urban Meyer. The Jaguars cut a former fifth-round pick, Quincy Williams. Dave Caldwell responded by saying, quote, I can't help that you guys didn't do your homework. God, honestly, the Jaguars are, are interesting for the first time in my lifetime, and I am absolutely, absolutely here for it. Ben Simmons is reporting that he doesn't want to be a sixer anymore, and he's not going to show up for camp. That makes sense. Philadelphia is not the place where you want to grow up. If you are, everybody in your life is telling you how great you are and what a star you're going to be, and then you haven't really seen the world, and then you go to Philly. Philly is not a city to lose your virginity in. Carson Wentz is now a crybaby, selfish loser, and wait, did I say that out loud? The Colts said that, by the way. And now Ben Simmons is a crybaby as well. And now he wants to get traded, so he's not going to show up for camp. So we'll see what the Sixers do with this, but it's crazy how the players have just taken over the NBA. Good for them, I guess. Bad for everyone else, bad for the teams, good for television. NBA moves one step closer to becoming the WWE every single day. Let's look at some props. Um, Sharpful, sharpfootballanalysis.com is a great place to get some free content and advice. It's also got a lot of places, uh, opportunities for you to pay and get good advice. Warren Sharp is a nerd. He's got a nerdy mustache. And when I say nerd, I mean he's a spreadsheet nerd. He knows some deep football analytics. He has, his last name is actually Sharp. I know it, it's just ridiculous. He has a lot of great advice for people on certain things. I like to, I, I like to look at gambling because gambling is fun for me. And I, I say this seriously. I don't, care about having skin in the game. Like, I don't care about that at all. What I do care about is my takes being correct. And I feel like the only way to have an actual take is to put effing money on it. Other than otherwise, I'm just calling coward. We're all just calling cowards. I think this is going to happen. We'll prove it. I would love to see a, a broadcasting network say, yes, you either get fired for bad takes or you have to put your salary, portions of your salary on your takes. Then we're talking. I would love that. That would be awesome. And that's the kind of stuff I'm trying to foster here. I gamble because I want my takes to be correct. So I don't gamble. Oh no. I don't gamble just to make money. I gamble so my takes are correct. I want to talk about receivers, overs, and unders. Uh, this is from sharpfootballanalysis.com. Link in the show notes, etc. Last year, Justin Jefferson was the best rookie wide receiver since Randy Moss. I believe a lot of that had to do with circumstance, and I believe that he will no be nowhere near that this year or next year, and he might never get there again. Let me tell you why. Because Adam Thielen, his teammate, is also one of the best receivers in, in the National Football League. He runs some of the very best routes in the NFL. And the Vikings have had probably the top receiver tandem in the NFL for years now. One of which has been Adam Thielen. Before Justin Jefferson, the partner in crime for Adam Thielen was Stefan Diggs, who is also one of the best receivers in the National Football League. In walks Justin Jefferson, who's pro-ready because he played in that Joe Brady offense. Is that the guy's name? Yeah, whoever the... LSU guy that won all the, the, the games. 
He played in that offense where he knew how to do that. He played with a quarterback who, who, who operated like an NFL quarterback, play action and throwing ball to the outside. He was ready to play NFL football. But we've seen this in the past. Juju Smith-Schuster was considered one of the best players in the NFL because he was getting all these numbers. Yes, but Antonio Brown was on the team and he was distracting everyone because he's one of, if not the greatest wide receiver of all time. I think it's Calvin, but a lot of people think it's Jerry Rice and Antonio Brown. When you have a guy like that distracting everybody, they're not going to focus on you, especially if you're a rookie, which leads to opportunities. And by the time the NFL figures out that you're the number one target, it's too late. The game's already behind them. In year two, we're going to see. Because if they start treating him like a number one receiver, which is what happened to Juju Smith-Schuster when Antonio Brown was suspended or when he wasn't there for the Steelers, I forget what happened. But when he left the team and Juju had to be number one, he's not a number one, he's not a number two, he's barely a number three. I don't think Justin Jefferson is that bad. I think he's significantly better than Juju Smith-Schuster, but I don't think he's historic. I think this has a lot to do with Adam Thielen. A lot to do. And I don't, I don't think it's impossible that Justin Jefferson will eventually be better than Adam Thielen, or, or it, perhaps he's better than him now. But he is due for an, in, an insane regression. Insane. In his rookie year, Justin Jefferson had 1,400 receiving yards. The over-under is 1,300-ish on DraftKings, BetMGM, and Bovada. Fade that. I think it gets maybe 1,000. That's an easy bet for me. That's my player long prop of the day. We'll look at some game lines. I uh, texted, so I'm in North Carolina where I can't legally place bets and no one believe I'm actually serious about this, but perhaps I text a friend in Pennsylvania to bet for me. A game I wanted to bet yesterday has been taken off the books and I think it'll be off the books for a while. Two big pieces of news broken. If you can get this game, you should get it now and see what the line is. The Packers were favored by three over the Saints. Two massive things happened this week for the Packers and the Saints that I think are going to distract Vegas and they're not going to know what to do. Thing number one, the Green Bay Packers' second best player and the best left tackle in football and the best left tackle that football has seen since Jason Peters in 2016, David Bakhtiari will not be ready for the first six weeks of the season. Without David Bakhtiari, the Bucs annihilated the Packers in the playoffs last year. He is a, an absolute difference maker for a guy that likes to mess around in the pocket like Aaron Rodgers. However, the New Orleans Saints city was just ravaged by a hurricane. They're not going home for a while. There's a chance that the Saints don't play at home to like one or two weeks before Halloween. They don't know where they're going to play. Last time, San Antonio. That makes a lot of sense. They could end up playing in Austin in college stadiums. They might end up playing in Dallas, at Jerry World. As an Ole Miss alumni, I'd love to see them play in Oxford. And I think that more New Orleans people are in Mississippi than they are other places. I think that could be fun. Regardless, they don't have a home. I'm going to be paying attention to a lot of home field advantage this year. Famously, last year, Aaron Rodgers was able to hard count the Saints in their own stadium. That will never happen with who that in the crowd. Who that's not going to be there for a while. So I was like, man, Packers are going to win. Then with the Bakhtiari news, uh, all of this is happening. The Packers, it's not even going to be a road game, but Bakhtiari is out. Vegas is going to be confused. The line was minus three. Packers favored by three. If it's available anywhere, I cannot emphasize enough. And if I, I, I don't know what's going to happen with this. I do think that the Packers are significantly better than the Saints. Significantly. But, you know, what do I know? 80% of all BetMGM money has gone to the Lions over. If you're betting on team totals, all of the money that's going on team totals over and under win totals is going on the Lions to win more than five games. The Lions won five or more games with Matt Patricia twice. They won six games, five games, and three and a half games one time. Now there's an extra data point. And other than Matthew Stafford, it's hard to argue that they actually got worse. They're kind of the same. So five makes a ton of sense. 82%. That's pretty crazy. College football starts tonight. I don't know. Is a Conference USA game or a... Mac a game, nah, I will probably browse it. I don't care that much. But real college football starts tomorrow night. Ohio State, Minnesota, Utah's playing. A bunch of other teams are playing, and we will preview all of that and get into football, 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 football as we round the corner on the baseball season and get into baseball playoffs and Ben Simmons drama. A lot of sports coming up. I stopped watching Hard Knocks. I don't feel that bad about it, I'm sure. The Dallas Cowboys elaborate commercial happened again last night. Anybody who watches, I suppose you can enjoy it. Follow me on Twitter. Tell your boss, tell your friends, tell your family. Remember, Bishop Sycamore, you were head of that story. If you subscribe to the podcast. Links in the show notes, follows in the show notes. I'll be back and better than ever tomorrow morning. <laughs>